Hi, welcome back to Vlogmas. Welcome to day 10. Today we're going to start with a little bit of a craft together, a DIY advent calendar candle. So this is a candle that you can burn a little bit each day to count down to a big event, maybe Christmas, maybe your birthday, or something else fun. So I'm going to switch the camera and show you how to make a very simple, quick DIY like this. So I'm just going to use this candlestick that I'm already, I've already lit. It's like partially burned and it's just a slim taper candlestick. Um, if you really want to have like a nice substantial candle, find a thicker candlestick and make sure it's long so that you can, you know, burn it each day, depending on how long your countdown is going to be. So we are basically replicating this poor beauty. <laughs> this is my December calendar candle that got torched. I think what happened was the writing on this candle is like a little adhesive, not a sticker, but it's something on top of the candle. And I think that burned differently than the candle itself burned. Like you see the candle itself was burning fine. And then this just started to get torched. You can tell it's like burnt. So <laughs> we are going to go for something like this, but as you can see, this is a much thicker candlestick. The wider it is, the more slowly it'll burn. So anyway, I'm just going to use this just to fill in the days to catch back up on this candle on the 14th. So this will vary a little bit for you, depending on how many days you're trying to count down on your candle. But for my purposes, I'm only going to be counting down four days. I think I'll do, so you can see this whole candle length is seven inches. So measure your candle and divide it by how many days you want to be burning it. So I think I'll do maybe like a half inch per day on here. Eh, you know, maybe I'll just give myself a whole inch per day because I'm only trying to mark off four days. But for whatever amount of time you're trying to do, keep that in mind. And I'm just going to be using a plain Sharpie. This seems to write on the candle wax perfectly fine. It will smear if you touch it before it's totally dry. So keep that in mind. Definitely don't touch it. And obviously you can't do like a lot of detail work with a Sharpie, but you can at least get some markings on your candle. And from what I did in my little test run, it seemed to burn just fine, just like any other part of the candle did. So hopefully that's true. And <laughs> we'll see how this little project goes. So you can mark it off however you want. You can draw little lines. You can make little designs. Um, this candle that I have here, they just have the number and that's how it, it's marked, you just burn through the numbers. So I think I'll just do it that way and write out my numbers so that they correspond to the measurement that I want them to be. So if you can see those tiny little dots I made that, now I know how much space I want to give each day. What a feeling, now it's time for Christmas. And Christmas is my favorite time of year. It's beginning to look like all my wishes are coming true. That's why I cheer. I've been busy decking the halls. I've been kind to big and small. And now it's time to have a merry holiday. All right, for better or worse, that's my little temporary advent calendar candle fix. So I'll have a decent, nice little chunk of candle to burn each day. Um, this does burn pretty fast because it's such a thin candle, but I could still probably burn that like all through dinner or all through while we're vlogging together and it'll give me a nice little amount of time. And then we'll be caught up back to this one. So I need to do a little bit of a repair job on this candle um, because it's, yeah, it's not in good shape. <laughs> So first of all, I'm going to take off all this extra wax. And to fix this section up here, I'm going to try and use my candle or <laughs> my candle shears, my kitchen shears to get rid of all this excess wax and bring it back to like a manageable level. I definitely want to get rid of all this burnt sticker because I think that is what was so flammable on this candle. And then you know when you get a candle how it kind of tapers up at the end? I'm going to try to replicate that shape so that it will hopefully burn well as it's getting started again. Okay, I don't totally know how well this is going to burn. 
I kind of butchered it into the original tapered shape up here and got rid of all of the sticker label that was not burning well. So this might be kind of crazy when I light it again on the 14th. If you want to see what happens, be sure you tune back in for a very special episode of Vlogmas. <laughs> but um, I think we have this salvaged, mostly. So I'll just uh, get back to that when we're ready for it. And in the meantime, we have our fun little makeshift advent candle. So all is well in my world again. <laughs> So now let's have a snack and enjoy our new candle. This one should burn for a nice longer time because I gave a lot of space in between the numbers. And we have some cookies that we made yesterday to finally get to try together and a mint green tea. So yeah, it's break time. And we have our little embroidery project that we're doing every single day. This is the status so far. I just did this cute little pink and red mint last night. And I thought that turned out really cute. So today we're doing this string of lights. So I'm just gonna sit here and sew and chit chat and have my cookies <laughs> if you wanna keep hanging around. But we made our candle, so that was the big exciting project. Mm, mint green tea is so good, that little hint of mint. Mm, so good. So we have the cozy corner behind us for today. But it was just easier to sit here at the desk and the cozy corner adjacent. So now they're doing yard work outside. I hope that's not super loud. But I felt so bad I didn't show you these cookies yesterday. So here's the almond cookie. And it is the perfect texture where it's like soft and chewy inside. Like so soft and chewy inside. And then crunchy outside because of these almonds. It's like a little bit golden, a little burny on the bottom. And it gives it the perfect like combination of textures where it's like crunchy and chewy. Mmm, it's really good with coffee. It's really good with coffee. I have tea because I've already had four cups of half-calf coffee today. Um, but it's like a perfect little like, coffee time break kind of cookie. So good. You taste all the layers of almond. And then the sugar cookies didn't turn out as good. Like they turned out very flat. But they're kind of fun because they're so crispy because of that. And then there's still a little chewy layer inside. And the sugar, crystal sugars make it really crispy. <laughs> really crispy on the outside. Mm. Very happy with all of our baking yesterday. I was like trying to total up in my head how many cookies we made. I think we made like well over a hundred cookies yesterday. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was an achievement. I took like 14,000 steps just in my little kitchen. I was very surprised by that because my kitchen is so small. And these kisses, by the way, are really good on these cookies. They are the sugar cookie flavored kisses. And they have little crunchy pieces inside. So you have like crunchiness in the cookie, crunchiness in the kiss. So many layers. So I know we already did like our little candle tutorial, but I thought we could also just do some chit chat and ketchup for the rest of this vlog while we do some embroidery. And let's see, I need to apologize that the first beginning 10 days of Vlogmas have been like a little bit of a bumpy road. <laughs> I know I had to combine a couple days and missed a day in there, but I really am trying. I really wanna show up for you guys and um, it means so much to me that you were so sweet and excited about Vlogmas, so. I'm here for that and still showing up. I just, sorry it's not like perfectly smooth sailing, but whoever thought it would be, right? <laughs> so yay for that. This week was like a lot of ups and downs. Um, you know, like we had such a fun date night, but then I shared how it like really threw me off on Monday. I was like way off schedule, but then I like bounced back and then I was just having like a really busy week and trying to fit Vlogmas in when I'm not used to, like, it's not part of my current routine, which we talked about. Uh, it's just been a little bit of a challenging week, but a good week overall. One thing that was a little bit sad was that um, we sold the Mustang. If you guys have been here long enough to know my car, my beloved Mustang. <sighs> Moment of silence for her. <laughs> 
so sad. I adore that car. I have an old like car tour video about that car. And why is my thread not working? So I had that car for like 10 years. Like it was a good run. It was a 2003 Mustang. Cherry, like candy apple red. So pretty. Stick shift, which is really fun because I feel like I'm the only person that still drives a stick shift. I love driving a stick. And I don't know if I'll ever be so lucky as to own another stick shift anytime soon, but um, yeah, it just wasn't necessary for us to be a two car family anymore, you know, with the way life has changed these last couple years. And even though it was a paid off car, which to me, I'm like, I just want, once a car is paid off, I want to just drive it into the ground. But it just didn't make sense because we weren't driving it as much and didn't need to have two cars, so. We sold it and I will miss it terribly. I love having a convertible. This is the first time in my adult life I have never had a convertible. So, poor Charlotte. I know that sounds ridiculous, but my first, they were all beaters. Like my first car ever was an old Volkswagen Cabriolet convertible, bright yellow. I loved scooting around town in that thing so much. And then I got an old beat up red Mustang convertible. And then when that one died, I got an old beat up red Mustang convertible. So like, I know what I like. <laughs> and I like convertibles, especially, you know, I had those cars in Florida and Georgia, which are, they're good convertible weather, but it's very rainy there. So coming out here to California, it was just like dream convertible weather. It is always convertible weather here. <laughs> and I just love it. But it's just not a practical car to be like, if we were to try to share that as our only car, it wasn't super practical. So we're sharing my husband's um, Toyota SUV instead as our main car. And I had a little bit of a tearful farewell with Mini Driver, my Mustang. May she go to a good home. I hope she goes to like some excellent Mustang collector person that takes excellent care of her. <laughs> Such a good car. Um, and hopefully one day I'll have a fun car again. I want another convertible. I really, 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 really want a 1950s car so bad. Like, I can't forgive the world for making cars not look like that anymore. It was just by far the coolest way a car could ever look in the 1950s. And they came in pink. <laughs> it was just, it was a good era. So, well, for cars. So I really want one of those one day. And they're kind of not as expensive as you would think. I assume they have a lot of problems, obviously being that old. But I will tell you, having always driven beaters my whole life, and my parents always had old cars that were always breaking down, like my poor mom. I remember so many childhood memories of her just like praying at an intersection for the car to start back up. So I've always had old bum cars in my life. And, um, you learn a lot about cars from that experience. Like, I kind of think I might know more about cars than Nate does because his cars tend to work better than mine do. And so, like, I've changed spark plugs and, um, like, oil tubes and, um, what's that tube? The radiator tubes and stuff like that. Like, I would just be out there with my dad doing these things, so. I know a little bit about cars, not enough to get a classic car and keep it running on my own, but one day, that's the dream, just to have a cute little 1950s Chevy, maybe pink, maybe turquoise, I don't know. That cushions the blow of saying goodbye to my old friend, the Mustang, so I'm gonna focus on making room for future fun cars, and it's great to save money, obviously, in the meantime, and be... Um, yeah, just be a one-car household that's totally doable for us. So that happened this week. Uh, what other life updates? Last night I watched The Shop Around the Corner, which is a movie from, I believe, 1940 with Jimmy Stewart and I feel so bad, I can't remember the, the actress's name, Mar Margaret Sullivan or something. Um, and it's the original movie that You've Got Mail is based on, so we all know. Hopefully that You've Got Mail is the best cinematic achievement of our modern era. <laughs> it's my favorite movie. But it was so much fun to finally watch the movie that it's based on. I can't believe I had never watched it before. It was so 
charming. I just had a smile on my face the whole time. It's so charming. I love Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart is like the Tom Hanks of the silver screen, like the classic film era. I, I adore him. I love all of his characters. So it was just really fun to see him. And then it was really cool to see how they took the original story almost like frame for frame. Some of the scenes were so identical to how they did it in the um, modern movie. So I just thought that was so much fun to watch. It was really funny. I have some questions about the ending. I, I need to find somebody to talk to about this movie with because the ending was confusing a little bit. It was strange, but it was just so, so charming. I really enjoyed it. And it's technically a Christmas movie because the shop that is the shop around the corner is like getting ready for the Christmas season throughout the movie. So there's some fun Christmas moments. It was just really cute, very cute. I watched it on HBO Max, so if you have that, it's streaming there. Hopefully, maybe it's streaming somewhere else too, I don't know. Um, but yeah, really good. I need to also pick a movie to watch with my Milk and Honey Club girls. So we're doing a movie night on Saturday. I love our movie nights so much. And this will obviously be a Christmas movie night. So we need to pick that movie. And I think for tomorrow's video, It'll be something related to that, so tune back in. <laughs> but I guess that's mostly the life updates. We have three holiday parties slash gatherings this week, um, or this weekend. Tonight, and then two things on Sunday, and my Milk and Honey movie night tomorrow night. So like the, the full holiday weekends are upon us. And I'm excited about it since I got all that baking done. I'm like feeling prepared. I have cookies in the freezer to defrost before each event and bring. And I've got all of my gifts mailed out. Like I still wanna get Nate some more gifts, but it kinda depends on budget there. So for the most part, I'm done with gifts. How are you guys doing on like holiday preparations? I thought I started so early this year and then I still just felt really down to the wire yesterday. Trying to get everything shipped out was like very hectic. So every year I'm like, I gotta start earlier. I gotta start earlier until it gets to the point where I'm probably just gonna be starting on December 26th and like getting ready for the next Christmas already, which actually sounds kind of fun because otherwise you have that like disappointment of Christmas being over. I think I might do that this year. <laughs> Should we start Vlogmas on December 26th? <laughs> Oh my gosh. But yeah, tell me how your holiday preparations are going if you do all that kind of stuff. Well, this is the status of our sewing. And I don't know if I'm liking these stitches. They said to use these little knot stitches, but you can kind of still see the circle on the pattern. So I might wind up redoing it. <laughs> I think I'm just going to fiddle with this tonight while I'm hanging out with my hubby and, um, or I don't know, whenever I have some time, like just sitting on the couch where I need a moment, I can work on this. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. And let's do our advent gifties. So much fun. Today is the 10th. And I decided to take these boxes out as I go because it looks like a cute picture is revealing itself back here. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> it says, join me around the, the tree. We have this cute box for today. What is it? Oh, please be a delicious serum. It's a delicious serum, yes. My skincare has been so woefully neglected. It's so sad. I'm so happy to have this tiny little bottle of serum. It's by Caudalie, is that how you say that brand? Um, I really like this line where they have, it's the Vino Perfect line and it's usually like some kind of grape extract. This is going to be so nice. I can tell it's going to be like really delightful because it's like a milky serum. And I really like serums that are hydrating. I am really excited about this. Yes, I've been 
kind of like floundering my way through drugstore skincare the majority of this year um, to be more budget friendly. And there are some great products, but there are also some real duds. <laughs> I've been, the struggle has been real. So if you're waiting for an updated skincare routine from me, so am I, so is my skin. Hopefully I'll get that figured out soon and I will definitely keep you posted. But in the meantime, yay for having a little high-end serum in my life. Mm, so good. And also, yay for having vanilla, <laughs> vanilla bean brulee coffee in my life. Our little Keurig advent for today. This is so cute that my friend made this. And that's it. We don't need a chocolate piece because we just had cookies. And I will say that this candle, this simple little DIY, burned really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and blow it out because we're already at the end of today's little one inch section. So I think on a thin candle like this, one inch was a good amount if you want to have a nice amount of time. Like I was sewing there for a while, so and we were chatting for a while, so it's a good amount of time. I'm so happy to have an advent candle back in my life until we catch up on the other one. I was really, really sad about that. As you saw, I took that hard, but we made the best of it. We can always find the silver lining, or as my grandmother would say, the blonde linings in any situation. And that's something to celebrate. So hooray for that. Thank you for joining me for another day of Vlogmas. Hit subscribe if you want to stay tuned in for the rest of this. We'll be vlogging mostly every day-ish until <laughs> Christmas Eve. And I am just here for it. So that this is your daily reminder to like slow down, take a deep breath, maybe give yourself a hug and savor the season and the fact that we only have 15 days until Christmas. And what does that mean? 21 days until the new year? Wow. I'm so ready for the fresh start of 2022. Please let it be a good one. Please. <laughs> we'll make the best of it no matter what it is. But it's just going to feel really nice to have that clean slate and lots of exciting goodness coming. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I love you, love you, love you. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.